Dear brothers and sisters, today, as I said at the beginning of the Mass, we are celebrating the solemnity of the Holy Trinity. And in that sense, this is an invitation for all of us to go deeper into the mystery of who God is. So if there's one thing that I asked you to beg for, to pray for, to ask, is that you might manage to get closer to the source of all life, to the source of everything that is good. If you remember, dear brothers and sisters, why, why are you here? Why is it that the church asks you, commands you, to come every Sunday to Mass? Why is it that that is required? Why, why is that so important? The fundamental reason is what you are trying to do right now here, which sometimes we forget. Hopefully today you will worship God. Okay, worship is a powerful word. Worship is not honor. Worship is not saying, hey, cool, Jesus, you're okay. Worship is not, okay, I'll have to do this. Let's just go ahead because I don't want to burn in hell, so I better go and do this. You know, uh, worship means I recognize you as God. I recognize that everything I have received and everything I have done comes from you. I recognize that you are the best and the most important. So to be able to help you do this, we do all of this. We all do because we've all participated. That's why we have a beautiful building that gives us a sense of the sacred. That's why I wear these things. That's why we have incense. That's why we have kneelers. That's why we do all the things that we do that we might little by little come to worship God. Then you will give him thanks, then you will ask him, then you will say sorry to him, then you will, etc., etc. But the first thing is worshiping. So let's try to go into this a little bit. And, and just to give you a bit of context, I think sometimes we have the in, impression, you know, through movies, through disinformation, through lies, the Catholic Church or the Church has tried to keep these mysteries away from you, you know. Let's keep them dumb so that they will follow us. You know, that, that's kind of like one of the narratives that the world has about the Church. If in my world, like when I was 18, 19, 20, I thought, literally and sincerely, that if you were dumb, you believed. Because you had to be kind of dumb in believing those magical things. And to the contrary to that, we see from the beginning, in the first reading today, from Moses, from way back then, before Christianity, even in Judaism, this encouragement for all of us to interrogate, to investigate. The first word you ha heard today from Moses is ask. Figure it out. You know, I love so many of you are researchers here, and you research amazing things. How does the eye work, and how does the brain work, and what is the composition, and how do we make more money out of the stock exchange, etc., etc. You investigate so many things. Moses, 5,000 years ago, and since then, all the way till today, is telling you, ask. Ask. And it's very important. And to that, humanity in all its history, in all its cultures, have asked. The question about God has, has moved the hearts of all humanity in different cultures. And in that sense, we see so many efforts, really beautiful and valuable efforts of mankind trying to figure out who is God. First of all, let's start with the wrong answers, you know. Uh, today, there is out there people who think that God does not exist. Well, bang, wrong, you know. Today, people out there think that God is like some kind of like tyrant, you know, capricious. He's like Zeus. He zaps someone and, oh, you're my best friend. You're going to be with me and you're not. And, and it's this kind of like capricious God. And, and there are many, many more 
variations of, of that kind of idea. Then there are the legitimate and good efforts of many, many religions who have tried to figure this out. You know, some people call God Krishna, some Brahma, some Allah, some Sankti. You know, we've got the Buddhist who is kind of like an empty God. And we've got Gnostics, an enlightened one, light, etc., illumination. To all these efforts, God, thousands of years be uh, uh, back, decided, I am going to reveal myself. And he chose a people. That was the Jewish people. And he started to reveal himself little by little. He is the creator. He is a good God. He is a God that is present to his people, who is listening to the cries of his people, who interacts with his people, who does wonders and marvelous things, who already, with the Jewish people, who are our own root, who was already saying, and he's like a father, and he's got like guts like a mother, and he's got all these qualities and these things, and he's merciful, and he's gentle, and he's good. But they didn't figure it all out. So, so remember, there's all these efforts of mankind trying to figure out who God is. And then they're from above, God sends prophets, God, God sends signs, and starts to reveal himself. But there's one moment that was absolutely crucial, which brings to fulfillment the whole revelation of God. And that moment is called Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is the only one, literally investigated. He is the only one who said I am God. He didn't say that exactly that way, but I am God, and I have come to reveal you who God is. That is pretty exact, the second part. The first part is inferred from everything that he did and everything that was said about him, and that's what we believe, that he is God. So that's such a big deal. You know, uh, Muhammad came and he said, I'm a prophet, I'm not God. What, what human being that is reasonably not crazy, because there are some crazies that do say, I'm God, you know, uh, some actually believe it, uh, but reasonably, with signs, with coherence, with integrity, has come and said, I have come from God, and I'm God himself, and I am here to reveal to you who God is. That the only person who did that is Jesus. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, it is so important that we take this seriously. You know, in our world today, I think one of the biggest issues we have is not what is happening in Ukraine or in Gaza and, or the, the polarization that we have in this country or famine or poverty or any of those which are real problems. The biggest problem we have today is that we do not take God seriously. How many families, couples, relationships are founded in God? They explicitly say, for us, God is first. We want to follow the first commandment. How many of us even here are saying, God is number one? Not, not my job, not my family, not my children, not the mortgage, not whatever it is, my studies, my PhD. God is first. God is the most important thing in my life. If you manage little by little to achieve that, to bring God into the center of your life, then everything will start to change around you. Just look at the statistics, guys. Look at how many couples or relationships that are not centered in God break up. It is brutally higher than those relationships that were centered in God. Seriously, not God like, like, oh, you know what, I am a traditional Catholic who was just baptized and I never go to Mass and I'm called, and I actually went to a church to get married. That is not taking God seriously. Couples that take God seriously are much 
more effective and successful than those who are not. That's one little example. So let's go in a bit more into who God is. What is Jesus revealing? What is this really important moment that Jesus revealed God to us? So last week we already celebrated Pentecost and we went into what the Holy Spirit is. And, and next weekend we'll have Corpus Christi and we'll go more into Christ and Jesus. And we we'll actually do Jesus the whole year. But anyway, we'll focus a bit more on him. Today, I would like to focus in the revelation that Jesus does that actually God is Father. God is a person. God is not only a person, but a very close person. He is literally your Father, who is with you, you like it or not. I, I was kind of a pagan during several years of my life. I, I think I never lost my faith in God, but he was definitely priority number like, I don't know, 20. Never went to mass, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yet, even through those years of darkness and disorder and pain and all that stuff and party and all that stuff as well, even through all those years, God never abandoned me because he is my father. He was gently and constantly and firmly working in me that I might come to believe in him and appreciate and open myself to the source of all that is good. So dear brothers and sisters, there's so much more to say, but eight or 10 minutes are up. So I won't keep you with it. There's one thing, guys, I beg. I beg you, just because I love you, because I want what is best for you. Take God seriously. Make God the priority of your life. That is what is right. Worship him. In doing so, you're going to open yourself to so many graces and you are going to be opening many, many more around you to those graces as well.